What's up everybody, welcome back to The Contrarian. Today I'll be making a shorter video about different ways of measuring inflation. Uh, for example, looking at trueflation especially, which is what I'll be looking at today. Inflation might actually already be at around 2%, which is well lower than what the Fed's official CPI of 3% is saying right now. And now trueflation is essentially attempting to measure inflation as it currently stands. So unlike CPI, which is using more backward looking data, more data that's released on a month to month basis, Trueflation actually updates all of their data uh, basically as soon as they can. So uh, they will update it daily actually to reflect the most current data. And so Trueflation, in my opinion, actually does reflect what inflation is actually looking like at any given time. Now, it's particularly fascinating to look at trueflation and to look at what it was a year ago because it actually well overshot what the official CPI got to around a year ago. Now, trueflation about a year ago peaked out around 11%, a little over 11%. That's well over what CPI ever reached. Now, on the low side, it looks like CPI is lagging trueflation as well on the downside. And this does indicate that inflation is likely going to keep trending down in coming months. So probably I would expect that CPI prints will continue to come in lower as more data comes out. Now that data is backward looking as well. So by then, trueflation, the actual rate of inflation, could be well lower than what the Fed actually says they want of 2%. So if the Fed's goal of 2% is actually what we have now and since the fed's policies are lagging in nature uh, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to see that yeah you could have a, a kind of a deflationary type scenario eventually come into play as a result of the fed's tightening that they have done uh, a very interesting point that was mentioned just a few days ago that i found pretty significant i mean it's pretty obvious but um, just thinking of the lags that Fed policy has, if, uh, if it's a 12-month lag, then we've basically only seen, you know, about a 200 basis point effect on the economy yet of the Fed's tightening. If it's an 18-month lag, uh, then we actually have not seen any of the Fed's tightening actually have an effect on the economy. So, yeah, that does really maybe not bode well for a recession on the six month to 18 month horizon from now because that is really when uh, you would start to see all of the tightening take effect on the economy and uh, by then you could see inflation you know way lower than what the fed was actually wanting it to be at two percent so maybe all of this is getting around to saying that uh, in my opinion it's kind of unnecessary that the fed raised rates another 25 basis points last week but, I mean, Jerome Powell is sticking with what he said he would do, so kudos to him for doing that. But maybe this, uh, the, the purpose of this video is more so saying that if the Fed was maybe more current looking, they might begin to, you know, ease off of, of rate hikes because they basically already have attained their goal of 2% according to trueflation. Now the Fed might want to factor in the stock market and, you know, they might start looking at the the stock market and how enthusiastic investors are right now, they might actually say, okay, that's a bad sign because that's kind of what caused inflation to begin with, or that's what they said was kind of causing inflation. And that did play into it to a degree. And so unfortunately, the Fed might start looking at the stock market rallying and investors being more uh, speculative, more froth returning to the market. They might see that as a indication that they need to tighten further and that could be a bad move on their part. Um, I'm not, you know, in any sort of position to make these sorts of decisions, but just simply analyzing what they might be looking at, why Jerome Powell might have made this 25 basis point rate hike. Part of it might have had to do with how, you know, how strong the stock market has done so far this year in 2023. So, you know, all this being said, this could turn into kind of a nasty scenario. David Hunter has talked about this before, where the Fed does end up tightening again on an already, you know, very uh, over-tightened type of situation. And that does, that could lead to a, a very 
um, you know, big policy error on their part. So all this being said, uh, I just hope uh, that you guys found this valuable looking at what inflation could currently be at as opposed to, you know, CPI, which is very sort of a lagging data. It's very lagging. It's uh, not as updated as Truflation. Truflation actually says they claim that they are some 30 times more accurate than the official inflation rate. Of course, that's maybe just their selling point there, but, you know, they do update it much more frequently. So it is, it is very interesting to see where, where Truflation might go in the coming months and where, you know, the official CPI ends up coming out. But if, if it's any sort of indication of where it's headed, Truflation has led CPI the last couple of years and it's definitely overshot and now it, it's undershooting CPI. So CPI will probably continue to follow Truflation to a lower rate. So if you liked this video, just consider um, giving it a thumbs up, subscribing to the channel, and I hope to see all of you again at some point.